Welcome everyone to the 2024 Gathering for Gardner auction preview. I'm Bob Hearn and I'll be describing a little bit uh, what this auction is for, how it's going to work, what we have on offer. Um, the first thing to say is that this auction uh, benefits Gathering for Gardner. It funds our scholarships. It funds our um, celebrate, monthly celebration of mind talks that we have professionally video edited. Uh, Gathering for Gardner, as, as you know, we're a small organization. We suffered a lot during the pandemic. We had a lot of costs we couldn't recover from having to cancel and postpone our conference several times. We've been fortunate to have some large donations but everything helps. And uh, so thank you, especially to Nancy Blackman for arranging this auction. So it's actually two auctions. There's gonna be an auction on eBay for charity that starts this Saturday. And there's also gonna be a live auction at the Gathering for Gardener itself. Um, and we have, uh, I'm gonna just describe a little bit about some of the items that we have. And we have some of the, um, people who have contributed those items here to talk about them. And I think it's most appropriate perhaps if I start with uh, Jim Gardner, if you're ready, Jim. Certainly. And then I think uh, I will pass, pass the um, event over for some comments by Dana Richards also. So we're offering a once in a lifetime well, maybe we'll do it more often. Let's see how popular it is. But uh, I'm going with, <laughs> yeah. um, I and with the help of Dana Richards, um, we're going to host a one half day, one day event out at my house in Norman, Oklahoma where um, there are six to eight file cabinets full of information that dad used to author some of his books and Scientific American columns and, and other articles he wrote in um, different contexts. Probably the person who knows best, and Dana will talk about that in a while, is Dana, who has visited Dad um, on numerous occasions and uh, been going through and examining the contents of Dad's files. And these files also include uh, being able to look at Dad's index card collection, which he has often mentioned in interviews and other things that he used starting when he was a, a young man in, in high school to organize different bits of science, magic, um, literary information that he used to often go back and refer to certain elements when he wanted to support something in his writing. So that will be in Norman, Oklahoma, at a date that we can arrange with, uh, with Dana. And then I think, I can't remember if it's either up to four or six individuals can attend. And then that evening, I will also host everyone to a dinner at my house. Uh, and I should also add, it will include a tour through the house, pointing out some of the various bits of artwork and items that were originally part of um, dad's office and house. So for example, one of them in the back is this photo of Albert Einstein that was taken on the day that Einstein became a citizen of the United States. And it was taken by one of dad's magician friends who was a professional photographer, Charlie Reynolds. And you'll get to see that up close. And I'll revere, and I will revere, reveal in your presence an interesting anecdote that occurred at the conclusion of that photo session with Albert Einstein, but will only be revealed 
to those who attend in person, but then you'll be free to share afterwards. Uh, Dana, I'll pass it off to you. Okay, well, um, the, I will be the, um, the less important part of the presentation, the most important part of the presentation are the files themselves. And, and so I've had many, many constructive hours spent going through the files. This is the reason I seem to be such an expert is because I've actually looked inside the files and, and you could become an expert too. And, and by, by, by uh, exploring uh, details that, that you, you wished you knew more about. And so I, I can guide you through them. I can tell you pretty much about every file and everything that's in there. So I will uh, be happy to uh, answer your questions and, and maybe tell you a story or two that you don't know. But there, you really do need a guide to go through the files. And I can't overestimate the uh, fun that you have going through the card files. The card files are not tied to columns or tied to specific articles. Card file, the card files, which are enormous, are really his own internet. Okay, he could he could search for and find anything he wanted uh, without leaving the room before there was an internet, before there, anything like that. It was, it's really hard to exaggerate just how ext extensive these are. And occasionally on these cards, you'll find things like, I believe this because, boy, you can't, that's just about as good as it gets, you know? I believe this because, and and so you get some insights from from that as well. So um, no one in a day can go through all of the card files. It's, it's, you, know, you can't exaggerate how many there are. Uh, they used to be in women's shoe boxes for a long time, but now they're in big metal cabinets. Uh, but uh, all I can say is that I, I'll I'll be there to be your guide and answer any questions you might have. And and Dana, you just made me think of something. Um, I, I will set up um, nearby the files. They're actually along one wall inside um, one of my garages. I've, I actually have room for three cars. And um, I will set up a scanning station that if people want to, um, we'll probably have to work out some form of a signed release but if, if you want to make copies of certain things just to go over and look at later on, um, you know, we, we, will, we will try to help you with that. And to add another anecdote, um, although I cannot point to it, um, over the years, uh, I, I think my, my aunt uh, Judy, dad's sole sister, remarked that in all likelihood, when dad was creating content, uh, it's highly possible that he took a razor blade and cut out pages from a first edition novel or something along that lines that probably if he had not done that and retained that book would probably have greater value than those pages. Now, I, I cannot tell you um, what that might be, but some of you may actually, if you're going through uh, and have some other knowledge that I or Dana don't have, you may be able to find cut out pages from a first edition book. So just a little well, more to it. I can tell you that his great bibliophile friend, John Bennett Shaw, Mm -hmm. um, knew when he cut up uh, a first edition of Great Gatsby <laughs> and, and, and chided him for that for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'll, I'll only add, we have not established this, but there this will be subject to a minimum bid. We haven't established it yet. But um, th this, is not, this is not something that someone can get for tickets to a Broadway show. So again, it's it's a uh, it's it, we're going to try to make this as big an event as possible. There are some other things I will try to arrange, um, but um, I, I can I'll make a comment, but I absolutely cannot promise this because it will depend on the day. But uh, the University of Oklahoma 
has one of the most prominent history of science collections at the OU library. And in the past, they have been supportive of G4G events. Um, and certainly I will try my best to, to see if I can arrange for us to have a short tour of their collection. And with that, you never know what you might see because it includes um, original works of Galileo, for example, that are, to my knowledge, still on display. So some of those things too will work to schedule in. So we're really gonna to try to make it an insightful day um, looking at dad's files and um, things that have inspired his work and other people. Thank you, Jim and Dana. That is a very generous gift and it's gonna be a very exciting experience for, for some lucky person persons. And I should add that this, this visit to the Gardner Files is one of the live auction items. So if you wanna bid on this, you need to be at the conference. Um, and I'm just going to go through the, there's only five live auction items. So I'll, I'll go through these first. The next one is a Vihart notebook that she used in her YouTube videos. And this one has uh, spirals, Fibonacci and more. And I think there's more description of it on the, um, on the website. Also, we have some hexaflexagons by Vihart that she used in her videos, uh, Vihart's own hexaflexagons. Um, Another one of our real uh, premier exchange contribution or uh, auction contributions is a one week stay in the World Puzzle Center in Italy. And we have George and Roxanne Miller here to tell us about that. Right. So we're asking you guys to spend a lot of money to help G4G and come on over to Italy. Uh, we live in Umbria. We're in a very small town. There are 37 people that live here year round. It is a, an absolutely amazing historic city center. Um, the, the, the views and the places that you can visit around here are phenomenal. We're two hours from Florence. We're two and a half hours from Rome. We're an hour from Assisi. Uh, an hour from Siena, two hours from Pisa. So it's it's a it's a wonderful place to to come and see if you want to jump off and visit other places. We have three fantastic restaurants in town. Two of them had Michelin stars before COVID. But they're in the process of trying to get it back. And the other one is in the process of trying to get its first Michelin star. Amazing places, wonderful people, just a fantastic place to be the best wine you'll ever get. Uh, the food is phenomenal. Um, and what we're asking is to just really donate some good money to Gathering for Gardener. And we're going to give you a week to stay in our in our castle. Um, it's a, it's a, a bed and breakfast kind of thing. I'm a good cook, you know, you'll get one or two meals out of me. And George is going to tell you about what we've got going on in the World Puzzle Center part of it. Yes, well, the reason we bought this, it was a crazy idea, but we bought a castle and we moved out of the U.S. to Italy and we brought all of our puzzles with us. And uh, it used to be called the Puzzle Palace where we had a lot of puzzles. It was our own personal collection. But since then, we've uh, acquired other people's collections. The most uh, notorious one is the uh, Horton Dalgetty collection. And uh, Edward Horton himself was a collector, not of puzzles, but of collections well, of puzzles. puzzles as well. So ours is actually a collection of collections of collections. Anyway, it all adds up to about 100,000 puzzles. And basically... It's uh, a pretty big number. We, <laughs> we have... It's impossible to have all the puzzles in the world, but... We come close. We have over 100,000 puzzles. Uh, we have collections from uh, Maddie Lashenka. Linkola. Linkola. Uh, RG. Also, Ed Vandershot. I very generously donated his collection. And Lambert Bright's collection, we also have. Among others that yes. I can't remember on the spur of the moment. Uh, we have uh, 
about 10,000 puzzle, uh, puzzles from Dick Hess. Dick Hess, mm -hmm. if you're very much into <laughs> metal physical yeah. elements. And uh, what we've done with the castle is uh, displayed all of these puzzles, which means a lot of shelves. I see, Bob, in the background, you have shelves worth full of puzzles, but you couldn't hold 100,000 on that. You'd have to expand it a bit. Uh, and like Puzzle Palace, the World Puzzle Center is display and play. So everything is open. You come in, you pick up a puzzle, you play with it, you enjoy it. But during your visit here, if you're interested in puzzles, of course, you can play any puzzle that you can find anyone in the world, practically. Uh, also, we have a huge workshop with over 20 3D printers and uh, laser cutters, and it goes on and on and on. I'm a prototyper. And uh, you have full access to that with, of course, my guidance. And we have an enormous library of puzzles, of, books, on uh, books puzzles. on puzzles, and also puzzles that look like books. <laughs> it's not easy to confuse the two, but we have them all in the library. It's a, a three-room library. Uh, it also includes RG's uh, notes. Now, he's not as famous as Gardner, but there's uh, four filing large cabinets. filing cabinets, all of his correspondence and his thoughts. He's sort of an unknown puzzle collector, but there's a lot of gems in those, too. So it's that's why we, it's not a puzzle palace anymore. It's a we've, puzzle, we've a world puzzle added, center. Uh, Bill Darrow's um, writings and, and uh, notes on the puzzles that he made. I acquired those. So those are part of the, the, the collection as well. We've got um, books and catalogs from many different people. Um, a lot of Maddie's uh, notes and stuff are in there just to, I'm thinking of the kind of puzzles that I like. That are there so there's just so much that people can can see and do when they come here and you know if you're you get tired of puzzles go down and have a good glass of wine or go down the hill to the lake trasimino where there's uh buried in that lake twenty five thousand romans who were killed by the troops from hannibal yeah the diving came... scuba diving is incredible <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so it's just a taste of Umbria, if you'd like. You kind of a week of the most fantastic place you've ever seen. Yeah, and people talk about you know the the, the movie, the book Under the Tuscan Sun. We are five minutes from Tuscany, ten, 10 minutes drive from Tuscany, and, and even better than Tuscany. This is even better. Tuscany is for tourists. Umbria is still wild and enjoyable. Wow. Well, it's. Uh... Very appropriate that it's now a puzzle castle because it's all acquired this extreme fairy tale sort of character, sort of all unbelievably over the top. So uh, somebody is going to be very lucky and have a wonderful week in Italy. And again, this this week stay in the World Puzzle Center is only available in the live auction at the conference itself. And thank you very much to George and Roxanne for this this fabulous gift. Yeah, but it applies to your whole family. Just a single person. Yeah. 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 Great. Okay. Yeah. okay. And the final item that we have in the live auction at the conference is um I'm gonna have to bid on on this one. I don't think we have Bill Cheswick here to talk about it. So I'm just going to say uh it's Paul Erdish's coat. Literally a coat owned and worn by Paul Erdish. Uh, whatever your Erdish number may be, it can only be improved by by wearing his coat, I would imagine. So this is an amazing item to have available. And thank you very much to Bill Cheswick for donating it. Um, before I go on to the silent auction items, um, let me say a little bit about our partner sites. So in addition to this, this auction, we have... Um, a few e-commerce websites who have agreed to donate 15% of their gross sales uh, from February 17th through February 24th. And actually, I believe Kate was saying it's it's going to be uh, more than that for her, if I recall. Um, 
they're going to donate 15% of their gross sales to Gathering for Gardner. So thank you very much to Kadon Enterprises, um, which, which produces um, fabulous laser cut um, puzzles and tessellation puzzles and things like that. Kate Jones was just here before we began telling us about it. Also SB Crafts, which produces mathematical clocks, apparel, and more. And finally, Two Brass Monkeys, which produces uh, precision engineered brass puzzles. Many of you have some of their puzzles. So thank you to uh, all of these e-commerce sites for these generous uh, donations to the Gathering for Gardener Foundation. Much appreciated. So let's move on to what we have at um, the eBay silent auction. And um, first up, Stan, do you want to say a few words about the puzzle box or would you rather me? Well, can I say something? Yes. Um, I don't have anything to say about the stuff that I sell, but I am going to put a link to my website in the chat um, so that might encourage people to buy during the um, donation time. And I just want to say that I, I have never gotten around to actually making the website look real. So you just have to click on the links um, and they work. <laughs> so I'll put it in the chat. That's all I wanted to say. Cool. That 15% goes to um, G for G. Yes. And uh, for those who don't know, that is indeed S SB Productions going to Britain. I'm SB. <laughs> yes. Of Santa Barbara. Ah, okay. So uh, next up, I want to... Um, See if Stan, would you be willing to say a few words about the Kagan Sound puzzle box? Yeah, I uh, I, I can read what, what Nick wrote with more more intelligence. The real thing, the puzzle box is a single box, which was originally a table of of six of this of this puzzle, uh, of which there were a very few made and of which George Miller has one of. It's the only one I've seen. It's basically a, a circular maze a, uh, that opens and, and, and you find all sorts of stuff in. Kagan makes beautiful puzzles in general, and this is one of uh, a set of three he made based on puzzles that he had in the, in the table. But I don't know much much else to say about it except i should take I, I i should have brought one in of one of the others in the set uh just to show it you you don't have the one there i have it wrapped up in a box it's already wrapped uh, in the box ready for shipping but it's beautiful it's gorgeous um uh, the, a picture is on the website on the or that's yeah, right there's I one put it on the gathering for gardener yeah. Um, uh, auction website, and uh, Nick tested it out um, to make sure that it worked. Uh, we had one puzzle in the previous auction that didn't work, so he wanted to make sure that this one, that all the puzzles in the auction this time work, That's and it's good. all been checked out. Thank you. So this box is is called the Caterpillar box, and. Uh, it has eight rotating concentric dials with wood inlay, wenge, and madrone. Uh, the box, rest of the box is crafted in walnut and bird's eye maple. Kagan Sound produces absolutely the, you know, premier yeah. top quality woodwork. So this is a, a very generous donation. Thank you, Stan. Um, next, we have, again, during the, this is the eBay silent auction, another Vihart notebook. And this Vihart notebook contains notes for Pi is wrong, plant stuff, pi equals four, and doodle music. Uh, we have three wooden puzzles, uh, Poseidon, surprising drawer, and a caged block puzzle. Um, I'm donating uh, one of my math art shirts. This this shirt is, uh, I wrote a paper about it with, with some collaborators. It is an image generated by what's called a compound symmetry group. It's made of uh, novel combinations of fourfold and fivefold symmetry and the winner can choose their size and will receive this shirt bob will it be the one you're wearing now 
Not the one I'm wearing now, no. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> I want that one. If you, you really want this inside. one, I, I will I will send it to you <laughs> and I can I easily replace it. <laughs> um, okay, let me see. Uh, who else do we have available to speak? Um, Rashmi was going to go last. Uh, Teja, are, are you here and would you like to say a few words? Yes, I'm here. It's uh, Thea. I'm sorry, Thea. I have uh, G4G15 logo, an unofficial logo. It's made out of, uh, uh, it features uh, Penrose tiles, Penrose roms from P2 tiling. And of course, it has uh, four, every ROM has four. Uh, equilateral sides and the uh, logo is uh, uh, also has fivefold symmetry and uh, in addition to that uh, it displays some visual instability uh, because I love optical illusions and uh, if you just spend a few moments more than usual looking at it uh, the segments that uh, look like uh, rhombohedra would uh, uh, open up and look as uh, uh, open boxes. And I thought uh, our Tom Rogers and Martin Gardner and Raymond Smalian would have uh, fun uh, watching it, looking at it. So I, I'm willing to send the file and I printed out a copy of it on oh, this paper. So, so it'll be on display at Gathering for Gardner. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Bob. Let me see what else we have in this auction. We have some Chinese puzzle posters. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Wei. And uh, my husband and I collect and research on Chinese puzzles. And but we didn't do anything about those posters. Our uh, friend Niana, whose alias is Stencil, Miss Stencil, uh, created and uh, and uh, designed and created the the posters and including our exhibition catalog. We have uh, um, two volume new puzzle books, but that's um, in Chinese, so I guess it's harder. Well, with over a thousand photos, it's really worthwhile to keep as reference if people are interested in Chinese puzzles. Um, but the, the the little booklet it is really just a very, very, very brief overview of our collections when we did our exhibition in 2008. Niana, are you able to talk about uh, the posters? I'm going to go get one to show while you talk, okay? Hi, hello, my name's Niana, and uh, uh, I'm the one who did the puzzle posters every year. Maybe you received that in the email newsletter. And um, I wanna show you, um, so basically it's uh, Tong Xie Deng's 15-piece um, uh, tangram puzzle that invented in 1862. Maybe you, uh, you already know that. And, uh, <clears throat> So um, every year I do a Chinese uh, zodiac puzzle poster. This is the original, uh, like a block that I carved, and you can see it. This one is a bunny, and I would uh, like make a print out of this, and so it's like a block printing. And I'm also thinking about donating um, a puzzle that uh, I made personally. So it looks like this. And inside you have the 15 piece puzzle. Uh, like this. And comes with that explanation that you can make the uh, zodiac animals out of. And um, 
I basically, I carved the, uh, the stamps and to make the packaging, uh, basically each tool means um, intelligence enhancing diagram. And this is a 15 piece um, tangram puzzle. And this, the wax seal that gives you uh, the solution of the puzzle. Uh, let's see what else. Um, I'm supposed to do a dragon post because yesterday was New Year's Day and I've been so busy, I haven't had a chance to finish the carving, but I'm hoping to finish either today or tomorrow. So I will make all the dragon uh, block prints. So that would be the, the ones I offer to uh, for the auction. Yeah. Well, we do have five posters in the oh. from previous oh. years. So, <laughs> so it, it'll be great if you can contribute something, we can add it to the auction. But if you don't, we still have posters. Okay, okay, great, from you. great. So here we come all the way around. You know, the Zodiac goes 12 years and then it comes all the way back. Now we're recycling the dragon. <laughs> and also you see, here's a rooster. Horse, goat, monkey, snake. Actually, one year, the year of the dog, um, <laughs> the artist still has to, she owes me. I know. Poster. But, <laughs> but then you can have my mother of of poster. poster. They're beautiful. I'm not happy that I still haven't done year of the dog. So, um. Yeah, I'm glad that most people didn't notice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Wei and, and Niana. Those are all beautiful and uh, elegant. So thank you for the gifts. There, there is one more thing that you have um, in that you um, that I got from you and that I contributed to the auction. It was the Chinese puzzle book, Games for the Hands and Mind. So that will be in the auction too. Next up in the silent auction, we have G for G exchange books uh, for G for G 10, 11, 12, and 13. These are all of the submitted papers to the to the gift exchange. It's sort of like the proceedings of the conference. Um, so that will be nice. Uh, we have a number of pieces of artwork. We have uh, a Martin Gardner portrait maze by Elizabeth Carpenter. Uh, we have um, Decagon Depth Perception by Deborah Coombs, and we have, have seen Teja's uh, piece already, and I believe that just leaves us with uh, Rashmi to describe her contributions. If you are ready, Rashmi? Um, I think so, but I'm afraid to run the video off that screen, okay. uh, so I will just run it off my iPad. <laughs> I initially drew both in 2018, but in order to display them in the art show at the JMM 2023 conference, I edited them to print clearly at a higher resolution and changed the aspect ratios so that I could have them printed near the conference in Boston instead of dealing with shipping them over the border. The white on black picture is called Pascal's Triangle. Here's a segment of video explaining the background of the image. It's taken from a short film that I showed at Bridges 2019. Think about Pascal's triangle, what do you see? Do you see entries added to entries to make more entries? This, or perhaps something like this. Here. What if we broke everything down at once? Would it be possible to make it look like a tree? Well, maybe not quite like that. Though looking back at that drawing did inspire me to look for more mathematically interesting patterns to use for branches and roots, just in case I have patience to redraw it someday. This made me consider different ways of drawing a binary tree. The properties may stay the same, such as the number of branches doubling at each stage. But if we consider the overlapping of branches to be important, then we have many options which result in interesting patterns and behaviors. More specifically, if we arrange the branches like this, the tree can have properties which related to Pascal's triangle. 
we can go back to thinking of the triangle as being made up of ones which behave like strands weaving their way through the tree. We can consider each entry N to be represented by N strands. Then we can generate a row of the triangle by splitting each strand from the previous row and assigning half to the left and half to the right. We can even split the tree in a way which suggests that it can be generated recursively. At this stage, I'm going to leave you to look at some pretty pictures so that I don't have to go into trying to make proof. I find the orange on black picture to be fairly mesmerizing. I call it look up because it reminds me of the inside of some Islamic domes. I've constructed it using shapes that I call squiggles that alternate between rotating left and right in specific ways. I wrote about the method that I used in a 2023 paper for the Bridges Conference. A portion of the specific picture shows up on, page, on the second page of the paper. It shows a few more of the details of how it was constructed. Okay, that, that's uh, pretty much all I have. Um, I apologize for it being backwards. I have a file where it wouldn't be, but uh, I was not sure I could share share the media safely in a short period of time. So I guess that's it. All right, thank you, Rashmi. Very that's nice, Rashmi, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we have come to the end of my list of items in the auction. And um, Nancy, is there anything you would like to add? Anything I might have forgotten? Well, I hope people will consider uh, supporting the auction. Oh, yeah, another thing that we're doing is we're giving out posters. By Heart made a poster uh, um, of hexaflexicons. I'll go get the poster. And if you bid in the live auction, you will get a poster. Um, so we're trying to encourage bidding, but I'll get the post. Is it on anything, Nancy, or just on that item? Uh, no, on anything in the live auction. Live auction. Okay. So we're, we printed up. Uh, can you see this? Here. Can you? Uh, here, I'll. Um, can you see that? So we've printed up copies of this, and we have 100 copies of this. Um, so... Uh, anybody who bids in the in the live auction will get a poster, assuming less than a hundred people bid. Okay, thank you, Nancy, and and thank you, Nancy, again for organizing this auction. I know that it's an amazing amount of work. And thank you to all the people who have contributed auction items. We we very much appreciate it. And with that, I believe I will wrap up. And again, the the the. Silent auction begins this Saturday and the live auction is only for those at the conference. So, well, I was thinking maybe they could have um, a person bid for them. So if you want to designate a person to bid for you, uh, sure. you just have to have a person, you know, bidding sure. for you, representing you. So you don't have to be at the conference to participate in the live auction. That makes sense. I started to put that in the chat when you said you had to be there, that you could get a proxy. And then I thought, well, maybe I shouldn't say that until I know for sure it's allowed. <laughs> I am all in favor of having proxies. Yeah, I think it's, Absolutely. I, it's a yeah. good. Oh, and the auction items are going to go live between 4 and 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or Eastern Time um, on this Saturday. Okay. Well, I hope to see as many of you as possible at the gathering. And... With that, I will uh, say goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.